Good morning. Today I want to give a warning to the church. A warning that I really believe we all should have known about all along. Because we are supposed as believers in Christ to know the word. But let us pray first. Heavenly Father, this morning I come before you and I know, Lord, that we have so many ideas, so many things that the world tells us that we should do. Lord, even the, church, the people in the world told the first believers that they called them Christians. And whenever the world gives you a name, they also set the requirements to be called whatever you were called. So if the world tells us we are Christians, that means that they will say, well, if you are a Christian, you will or will not do the following. And that is just the problem. Father, thank you this morning. I'm not just a Christian. I am a believer in Christ Jesus. I am born again, washed in the blood, spirit fault. And I thank you, Father. <clears throat> this morning, Lord, I ask that you will use me to bring a timely warning to the church so that we can rise to the occasion. It is, I'm not here, Father God, to, 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 to hit anyone over the fingers. I'm here to say, come on, church. Come on. Let us finish this. We are the finishing generation. I thank you and I promise, as always, to give you and you alone the glory. Amen. Well, Proverbs 14, verse 12, in the Amplified. <clears throat> Pardon me. There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him. But at the end of it is the way of death. One fact that the Bible teaches us very clearly is that God says what He means and He means what He says. God is not confused as the world are trying to portray Him. If you listen to some people, I'm telling you, I've been looking at people and this morning God told him to do the following and he's got a scripture to back it up. Tomorrow, he's got another scripture saying exactly the opposite of what God said yesterday. And I'm looking at him and, and I'm thinking, Shaw, I don't know what God you serve, but your God is confused. My God isn't confused. They want to portray God as an old grey man in a rocking chair sitting on the porch and uh, what will we do today? But none of that. My God has been from eternity to eternity, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the omnipresent, all-powerful, all-knowing God. Ezekiel writes something very important along the line of what I want to say to you this morning. Ezekiel 3 verse 18, and I'm reading from the King James, says, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. You see, God is very clear that, and, and we can see it all through Scripture, that God is looking at us. He has called us for, for and with a purpose to do His works on earth. We are His ambassadors. And people, I've had the privilege many years ago of working at the Houses of Parliament when I was still in the police. And, and an ambassador don't do anything out of his own. He only says what his government says. The one that he represents. And this is a problem with the church today. Every church or every denomination think that they are some kingdom in, in, of their own making and in their own right. They can say what they want, do what they want, teach what they want, live the way they want to. But that is the world's way. God's way is, if I am an ambassador of God and you ask me a question about anything, what do you think about abortion? 
What do you think about uh, same-sex marriages or whatever? The, the thing is, I don't even, I, or I may not tell you my opinion on this or, or as I see it. No, no. I need to tell you what the Word says. And this is a problem. Many people uh, call uh, ministers people of hate speech. But it's not about hate. It's about right and wrong. True and false. And I need to love you Im enough to tell you the truth because only the truth can set you free. It's not about judging you. It's about judging the works. But I'm an ambassador. I must say what my God says. The ambassador will always, even if he's got another opinion or if he's not sure, he will say, just wait a minute. I just need to check in with my government. There is very definite consequences to not obeying his commands. We just read Ezekiel. Ezekiel is very, God said through Ezekiel, if you do not warn, if you do not do what I ask of you, even the people that died because you didn't warn them, I will hold you responsible for that. Many ministers seem to forget that the word is very clear. That God is holding us responsible for the sheep that he is putting our, under our care. I want to sh show you something back, back, back in the days of my, of my uh, police career. One of the things that, that in the police, in the military, that, that you do is also train, and we call it the immediate action drill. What do you do when something specific happens? And, and the example that I'm showing you the photos of, I got permission back in the days to, put the, uh, to take this photos and it was published in the official South Farmers Police magazine at that time. But the immediate action drill for hand grenade attacks is the following. If you look at the first photo, you will see that someone that is standing there and is pointing out the danger. He saw the grenade first. So he is uh, he's pointing towards the danger. No mixing of words. He has point to it and shout, Grenade! Everybody within earshot knows what he is saying. No long story about it. Then the next photo Immediately everyone goes down with their feet in the direction of the danger where the blast will come from. Putting their fingers in their ears, opening uh, their mouth, closing their eyes. And the last one, you will see the little blast there from the uh, practice grenade. You wait for the explosion and you don't get up until it's safe. What is the key here? Someone that I w is warning the others. A man or a woman or somebody that sees something that's, that's shouted. You don't discuss what is happening. You don't say, oh, I think there's a tsunami on its way. You cry tsunami. You cry fire. A very clear shout of warning. And this is a problem with the church. The church is, uh, uh, has become so muddled. We don't warn clear enough anymore. We don't call a spade a spade. As an attack can, can come at any time, so things happen in the real world as well, at any given time. And if you do not heed the warning, you may be killed or seriously injured. You need to listen, but it's up to you. You cannot schedule bad things for when you feel up to it. Let's go back to the Bible. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2 in the Amplified says, Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by. Be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable. <coughs> Pardon me. Whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Whether it is welcome or unwelcome. You as preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. And convince them. Rebuking and correcting. Warning and urging and encouraging them. Being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching. The Bible uses the, 
the Greek word caruso, where we read herald, uh, or herald or preach, meaning to shout it forth as a crier. Now, many of the younger people today don't really know a crier anymore. I remember when we lived in a very small uh, uh, Karoo town, uh, certain times when, when, it, when it got time, uh, once a quarter for, for the local auction, where the farmers come to, to buy cattle, they had this young man, and many times grown-ups, uh, with, with a big placard, with all the information of the auction, and he had a, a large bell, and he will ring this bell, and he will cry, auction, 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 and the people will stop him, and they will read the date, and the venue, and the time of everything. In Hermanus, in the Western Cape, there was, I don't know if they're still there, but they had a crier, that used to go to the town, and he shouted, Wales! Wales, and everybody knew where to go to, for, for, uh, to watch the whales uh, in the harbor or wherever he was uh, pointing them to. But this is what the word says. You need to go around as a crier, to herald, to, to, to preach, to shout it forth. Not saying, oh, you know, brother, I just want to tell you your faith is your personal matter. It's no man. It's not personal. It's personal between you and God, yes. But God, Son, Jesus Christ, died openly on Calvary. And He displayed the enemy openly. And I, me and you have got to stand up for Him openly. The Bible says if you, you and I will be ashamed of Him, He will be ashamed of us. But if we will declare Him, He will declare us. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14, King James. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We all know the scripture by heart. Every second revival meeting, every second repentance meeting, this is the scripture. And I want to tell you, I think that in most cases, the church has repented at nauseam. We've repented to things, I'm telling you, I said one day, it feels like I'm repenting my neighbor's sins now. But the big thing, and this is the problem, we, we keep on talking around the problems. We are going with the flow, we, are, uh, we don't warn enough, this is the big thing. I think the thing that the church should repent of is to stand up and say, Lord, I was missing in action. Lord, I didn't speak out when you wanted me to speak out. I also went with the flow. Through our indifference, through, through our silence, we have allowed the enemy to form a false church, a false Christianity that compromised on every single biblical principle. We called it love. We called it grace. And it has come back to haunt us now. We refused to stand up and take firm action. We stopped calling a spade a spade and we fell for the political lie of political correctness. We kept quiet about promiscuity and lasciviousness. And this led to unwanted pregnancies and this led because we kept quiet to, to, to abortion. And we keep quiet about that as well. And so the vicious, vicious circle continues. I want to make a very diff a dangerous statement this morning. The world is in the state it's in because the church is in the state it's in. We need forgiveness for looking the other way when the en enemy came in. The Bible says when the enemy comes in, whether you read it with or without the comma, when the enemy comes in like a flood, a God raises up a standard against it. Or when the enemy comes in with a, like a flood, God will raise up a standard. Whatever way you read it. But the fact is, God always raises a standard against the enemy. But not the church. Oh, we will just love you. Come get a hug. Grace, my brother. Of course it is grace. We are saved by grace. But we need to deal with the problems. 
It is time to deal with the past, to move on. It is time for the church to arise and take its rightful place in society again. Isaiah 1.18 Amplified says the following, Come now, and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. You see, this scripture literally means to stop everything and to finish the matter once and for all. In Afrikaans say, kom laat ons dit klaar maak. Kom ons handel dit af. Let us finish this. The enemy does not care if we just repent meeting after meeting after meeting. Because we have been turned so inward that we do not reach the, lo the lost anymore. We keep on t talking around all the important issues. We repent with crocodile tears. So he, tomorrow the enemy comes with something new, but you are all so guilty of. And he blames us for something else again. God has paid the price so that we can sit down, repent, get it out of the way, out of our system, and rise up more than overcome us. We need to get up. And as a good rule over the bad and the ugly. We need to show the way, give direction and make life hell for the enemy. When government and powers to be do wrong, the church must be right up there in their faces telling them, this ain't gonna fly. Mentor the people around you. Educate them. Many, many years ago there was an old political saying, let each one teach one. Let each one teach one about the goodness of God. Make disciples of Christ, not members of a church. Don't spread your denomination. You are making proselytes, not disciples. But spread, teach and preach the, king, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may you through and by your Holy Spirit, today, as people listen to this short message, may you warn them, may you strike a chord in their hearts where they will say, I have been washed in the blood, I've been cleansed, I've been forgiven, I've been set free. Now I need to do what is expected of me again. The church needs to arise. The church needs to stand up. The church needs to have a voice again. But a voice this time that says what the Bible says because we are ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of reconciliation. I thank you and I worship you. Father, may your love, the grace of Jesus Christ and the wonderful companionship of the Holy Spirit be our portion in this day and week. Amen. Well, I want to encourage you. It is harvest time. Deal with the past. Stand up as an overcomer. Pull off your fancy robes. Take it off. Put on your overalls. And let us bring in the sheaves. We are laborers in God's vineyard. God bless you.
Rejoicing, bringing in the sheep.